Good afternoon, brethren, brothers and sisters. This year I've been asked to give a testimony. And starting out, I thought I'd introduce myself. Some of I, some I haven't met yet. Uh, my name is James Arnold, and as it has been mentioned, I'm from over in Kansas, McPherson, Kansas. And my desire this afternoon is to share with you what God has been doing within me. And my desire is to put the spotlight on him today. And Jesus Christ. To give um, a little bit of background about myself, I uh, grew up in a Christian home all my life. Um, my father was a minister and still is. And uh, pretty much every time the church doors were open, we, I was there with my family. But as you know, that doesn't guarantee you a lot. It doesn't guarantee you salvation. It doesn't guarantee you um, a lot, spiritually speaking. But it did give me a, it helped me to be familiar with spiritual things. If I could sum up majority of my life, I would sum it up in a couple of words fear, of being afraid. That was kind of what my life was like growing up. Because not that I didn't have a good childhood. I had a very good childhood. I had parents that had taken care of me, who provided all the things that I needed. But spiritually speaking, I was afraid. I was scared. I was fearful. At the age of around nine or ten, I began to have nightmares. Nightmares about Christ coming and I not being ready. Nightmares that caused me to jump out of bed and run all over my house because I was afraid. Because at that age I knew that I wasn't ready if he did come then. I had uh, these nightmares for many years. Growing up around that age I knew that I needed to be a, a Christian. I knew I needed to be baptized into Christ. I had attended youth camps and rallies that had convicted me of, of this, that that's what I needed to do. But for about four years, I had resisted that. Finally, after a time, the nightmares were more often, and I would, and after I would have them, my fear lasted for many days. I didn't want to go to hell, and I didn't want to face the judgment not ready. And so finally I had talked to my dad and I told him that I wanted to be baptized. But in my mind I wanted to be baptized because I wanted to get rid of those nightmares. And so that they would go away. He studied with me, my dad studied with me and showed me some film strips about the Bible. And he asked me a lot of questions. A lot of them I didn't really understand, but I said I did because I really wanted to be baptized. After the film strips were completed, shortly after 
I was baptized. And at first I was excited, I was happy, because I thought that everything was going to be different. But soon after, things went back to the way they were before. Still lived the life of being of fear and being afraid. I had no power in my life, even though I tried to have power. I tried to work at being perfect. I tried to work at being holy. I had tried everything that I was told to do, and I worked at doing everything that I, that I was told that I needed to do. But I found that I, I couldn't do it. The desire was there, but I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't do it. I wanted to, and I wanted to please God, and I wanted to be used by him. But in my life, I had always failed. I had no power to overcome sin in my life. So at this time, I thought it would help if I went to Bible college. I went with the desire of wanting to know more about God and the Bible, hoping that it would help me to learn how to be a Christian. I went to all four years of school, but during the first two years of school, I fell very deep into sin. I was away from home, and I, I did the things that I wanted to do. I acted like a Christian. I spoke like one. But really, I was a fake. I began to question my Christian life. I began to question my baptism and wondered if I really had become a Christian. I had nothing in my life that confirmed that I was in Christ and that I was a Christian. Still at this time, I knew that if I had died, that I wasn't going to go to heaven. I lived this way for many years, all the way up to last year. So about 16 years, I lived this way, a life of fear. But then God, who was doing a great work in me, intervened. And at exactly the right time, he placed in my life a man who would help me to understand where I was in Christ or where I was in, in my life. And I believe that God had put this person in my life for a specific reason. And that person was Brother Given. Last year I had asked, I was asked if I'd be in charge of a spring rally that we had in my hometown and to put it together and to find a speaker. So I had accepted. But during this time, God was working. And my mother-in-law, Sister Danielle, was talking to Brother Given about spiritual things uh, through Facebook. And she mentioned some things that he had said to her. And she told my wife, and my wife had told me. I failed to remember exactly the things that were said, but they sounded so good. Kind of like the things that sound so good are too good to be true. But it made me think, but what if it is true? 
My mother-in-law, Sister Danielle, suggested that we ask Brother Given to come and speak at our spring rally. And so I contacted him on Facebook and asked if he'd be willing to come and speak for us. I asked him if he'd be willing to speak on the topic of spiritual peace because that was what I was lacking. He came and he spoke three powerful messages that God had used to light a, sp a fire within me. Every day after I begin to listen to sermons online on YouTube and, and the, the, the messages that were online, and I heard things that I've never heard before. I heard things about how, about the gospel that I never heard before. I heard things like, the gospel is about God. You know, never heard, I mean, I'm never heard it in that way. It's about Jesus Christ, because see, I thought that it was about me. I heard things like, you can't be wrong about Christ. Boy, that was a challenge to me. I heard teaching about um, the correct view of, of baptism, about the inner conflict, about Jesus Christ being the high priest, about the new covenant. I heard things about like the second coming of Christ, things that, wow, that had, that were awesome things to hear about. A few months later, we were invited to come to the Refreshing Waters Renewal. For a, f for a few months leading up to that, I watched previous renewals all the way, I think, up to number 10 or 11. And my heart yearned to be here. But at that time, we were expecting our daughter to be born. And her due date was somewhere around the 20th of August, so we planned to attend. Then things changed, and my daughter was going to come early, right during the week of the renewal. So we prayed that, that God would make it possible that we could still be able to come. And so God had heard our prayers, and our daughter was born three days before the renewal. And so we were still able to come. And I thank God for that. Because that renewal had changed my life. I believe that God had worked everything out so that we could be able to hear the gospel preached and expounded upon. I can remember the first day of the renewal. I remember I had a really sore back. Not because of the seats or anything, but because I was on the edge of my seat, leaning forward, listening to these wonderful words of the gospel that was being preached. After the renewal, I went home with a lot on my mind. I knew that, I, I knew I wasn't, what I confessed to be, but I continually convinced myself, well, I was baptized, so I'm okay. But the more that I had thought about it, the more that I kept hearing messages, I came to the realization that I wasn't okay. And so I made the decision that I needed to be baptized into Christ. My baptism at the age of 14 was just a ceremony. 
And I had finally accepted that by the help of God as I sought him and, and prayed about it that he would that he would make known to me where I stood with him. So on August 23rd last year, I was baptized into Christ. I was baptized into his death. I was buried with him and I raised to walk in newness of life. My old man was crucified and I was no longer a slave. I had been set free. I was dead to sin and alive to God. My sins had been washed away. And the blood of, by the blood of Jesus Christ and the powerful working of God. God what was, is what was salvation was all about. Jesus is what salvation was all about. And I could finally see that. What they did and what they are doing and what they're going to do was what it's, what it's about. What God and Jesus did in salvation was not the emphasis and, it, and what they accomplished was not the emphasis when I was baptized the first time. I had trusted in the baptism itself and not in God and not in Christ, but in, but in me and what I was doing. But by the grace of God, he was working within me. He was patient with me. And he taught me what I was missing, that it's all about him and all about his son. Without them at the center, there is no salvation. The gospel truly is the power of God unto salvation. And I praise God for the salvation that he has given me. After I was baptized, my life had changed. Since I was baptized into Christ, I had no longer had any nightmares. And I rejoice in that, to be free of that. Now I can look forward to and anticipate the coming of the Lord. He has been working in me and has helped me to become an overcomer. And at one time, I was not an overcomer. He has helped me and has, and has given me a love for the truth and for his word. He has worked in me and has given me He has worked in me and has given me a love for the gospel as well. He has worked in me to be aware of sin in my life and to, and to hate it and abhor it. I can finally say that fear no longer rules my life. I can actually think about, ponder, spend time thinking about the coming of Christ without being terrified. And I anticipate and long to see his face of the one who had died for me. I look forward to the day when I will be able to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. And ending with this testimony, 
I wanted to say to God be the glory for the things that he has done. Amen. Thank you, brother.